There was a young man who dishonored his father's name and he disgraced his family. And he decided to leave home because he wanted to escape the dullness of ordinary village family life. He was bored with it. So he left home, he found excitement. For a while he prospered in his sinful lifestyle. And you know, sin will always look attractive for a while, do you know that? It always seems to be just, just what you want for a little while. He visited a hotel where girls were kept in every room. Some were older, some was as young as 10. He became involved in prostitution. He eventually started selling drugs and even luring other men into the hotel. He finally got involved in kidnapping and selling girls. That's how low that he sunk. Well, it was a nasty business, and became one of the, but he became one of the most important businessmen in the area, and he had all kinds of money, but eventually the bottom dropped out. How many of you know that's always what happens, eventually? Maybe most of us who came to Christ came because in some way, shape, or form, the bottom dropped out. He was robbed, arrested, and finally ended up living in a very dangerous part of town near the city dump. As he sat there day after day in his misery, he began to think about his father and the simple, quiet, peaceful life he had when he lived at home in his village. He remembered his father's parting words when he left, which had been about 15 years prior, son, I'll be waiting for you. He began to wonder if his father would still be waiting but he knew that the word about his lifestyle had made it back to the village, and so how would his father feel about him now and all the things that he'd done? Surely he wouldn't want him back now. But he decided to take a chance and write a letter to his father, and he said, Father, I want to come home, but I don't know if you'll have me back because I've sinned greatly. Father, please forgive me. I'm going to come on the train on Saturday night, and if you'll still let me come home, would you tie a white ribbon in the tree out in front of our house. And I'll know if I see that ribbon that you'll have me back. And on the trip home, he began to think about his life and what he thought his father might say. And he just got so nervous and so anxious and so afraid that he was going to get rejected that it became obvious to some of the people sitting around him that he was having a problem. So one man asked him, son, what's wrong? And so he began to share with him the dilemma that he was in and how frightened he was that his father wouldn't have him back and so on and so forth. And so they were getting closer and closer to what was going to be the boy's house. And the boy was just so scared he couldn't even look. So he said to the man that was talking to him, I'm, I just can't even look. I'm so afraid that he won't have me back. I can't even look. Will you watch for me? And if you see a ribbon in the tree, would you tell me? that it's there. So he put his face between his knees and he said, sir, do you see the ribbon? Do you see the ribbon? Is there a ribbon in the tree? Is there a ribbon in the branch of the tree? And the man said, son, there's not a ribbon in the tree. On one branch, there is a ribbon tied on every branch. <laughs> that tree is completely full of ribbons. And the young man looked out the window, could hardly believe his eyes because running alongside the train that was beginning to slow down, waving a piece of white cloth, was his elderly father saying, son, I've been waiting for you. Amen. Now, your sin has already been paid for. You don't have to beg God to forgive you. All you need to do is say, I'm sorry for my sin, and I want to enter on a better course of life. I want to turn around and go in another direction. If you're here tonight or you're watching by TV, I'm going to invite you to pray with me. You know, receiving Christ is so simple. You don't really have to do anything except just surrender. <laughs> just say, yes. Yes, I want a better life. I want Jesus. Watching by TV, there are people, you're tracking right with us. You're gonna pray this same prayer. God's coming into your life. I want you all just to pray this with me right now. Let's all pray together, together. 
Father God, I love you. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me. You paid for my sin. I've lived a sinful life. And I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me. I want to turn my life around. But I need you to help me. Come into my life. Live in me. I give myself to you right now. And I receive you as my very own. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. I believe that I'm on my way to heaven. And I'm going to enjoy my journey with you. Amen. Amen. thank you very much for watching. You know, I have so much more to share with you from God's Word. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a thing.